Okay, this video is part four in our series on solving an electric power system load flow in C Sharp. And in this video, we're going to actually write some code uh, in C Sharp using object oriented concepts that we developed in previous video to solve a load flow and show you how to develop the algorithms to do the solution. And in particular, we're going to start with the Gauss Seidel uh, solution. Now, uh, in the previous videos, in, in, in part one of the series, we talked about basic concepts on how you would solve a complicated uh, network power system load flow. And we, we mentioned that it's basically a very simple solution of Kirchhoff's current law in which we take, uh, we sum the currents in each bus to zero and using that Kirchhoff's current law, we can figure out the voltage at each bus using an iterative solution. And we basically came up with this equation uh, at each bus where we basically solve for the currents on each line coming into the bus and sum that with whatever, whatever current is going out of the bus to feed the load. So we have the sum of these currents uh, equals zero at each bus and from that we can develop these equations for voltage. And we mentioned in the first video that we have, uh, for example, at bus two, we have this bus two voltage we're trying to solve for and we've got some unknowns here. And what we do is we, we replace these unknowns, these voltages in green, we replace those with guesses and we solve for a new value of V2 in this case and then take this V2, put it back into this equation, resolve it, and we get a better value for V2. And we iterate through to get better and better values for V2. And then once we have a value for V2, we go to the next bus, plug that V2 into this similar equation, solve for V4, and iterate through and do that throughout the system, going to each bus, solving with the best previous uh, voltages for the other buses. And at the end of all these iterations, we finally converge on a final solution for all the bus voltages. So you can see that there's an iteration that we're gonna to have to do through all the buses. And in each bus, we're going to do a sub iteration where you recall from the first video, we said we have two components to calculate the currents coming into that bus. Uh, one is, is kind of a remote component, which is, for example, this V1 times Y12, which is what I call the remote component of this current. And we also have V4 times Y24, which is the remote component of this current. And for every line coming into the bus we're solving for, we've got a remote component of current on the line coming in. And that's basically represented by this sum here, where we've got V1, Y12, which is this remote component, V4, Y24, and for every uh, line coming in, we will just add on these rem remote components and then add those to this local component. So you can see not only do we have this iteration for each bus to solve the voltages, we've got this sub iteration where we sum the remote components for every line coming in. So, so a V of the remote bus times the admittance of the line coming in. So we've got another iteration we have to make when we do the solution. Now, first thing we want to do is figure out if we're going to write a C sharp um, code for this, we're going to have to first set up some matrices or vectors. And we know that since we're solving for voltage at each bus, we're going to need a vector that represents the voltage at each bus. So in this case, I've got a vector called Vbus, and I've got four elements, uh, one for each voltage at each bus on the system. Now, we're also going to have to have a big matrix that represents the system itself, all of the system impedances or admittances in a uh, matrix. And this is going to be a four by four matrix because there are four buses and you're going to have admittances between some of the buses. So now we've got a vector of voltages and an admittance of um, called Y bus. Now Y bus is not just the raw admittances uh, between the buses. 
It is a admittance bus, uh, admittance, admittance matrix that is designed to help solve this equation. So um, we'll talk about that in a different video, but this is um, the Y bus, which is a bit different from the, the what I call the raw Y matrix. So now we've got a vector, we've got a matrix. We're also gonna need uh, what I call V bus old, which is the previous iteration values of bus voltages. Okay, so it's another vector. We've got the, the, the latest V bus and V bus old, which is the previous iteration of V bus. And from that, we will develop V bus diff, which is the difference between the old and the new. And we're gonna need that to determine if we are converging and if our solution is converged to the final answer. So we take the difference between the two and check to see if this difference is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And at some point, all of these VBUS differences will be so small that we will settle on the converged value. Now we're also gonna need a vector of P and Q at each bus, because when we do this equation, uh, to solve for voltage, we need P and Q for each bus to determine the bus current in Kirchhoff's current law. So we're going to have another vector with net P and Q, which is the sum of the loads and the generations coming into the bus. It's going to give us a net P and Q. So now we've got one, two, three, four vectors and one matrix. So next thing I want to talk about briefly is uh, talk about the concept of an analytical versus an iterative solution. Now, um, as you can see here, for this system we're, we're working with, we've got, a, we've got three equations here, and we've got three unknowns, and the unknowns are the bus voltages that are in green, okay? So we've got V2, V4, uh, V4, V2, V4, V3. So we've got three equations, three unknowns. Now, there are a number of ways to solve three equations and three unknown linear equations. What we're going to do, as we talked about before, is an iterative solution. And that basically involves, you, you make a guess for V2 and V4 in this first equation, you solve for V2, and then you take that V2 and plug it into this V4 equation and use that to solve for V4, and then you use that updated value plug it into the V3 equation to solve for V3. That is called the Gauss-Seidel iterative method for solution, where you take, you figure the latest value for one, you plug it into the next, and you iterate through to find the final values. Now, you may recall from your um, algebra classes the concept of two equations and two unknowns. How do you solve for those? Now, here I've got some simple uh, two simple equations, two equations, two unknowns. The unknowns are x and y. And as you may know, there are many ways you can solve for these two equations to solve for x and y. I mean, you can look at this and you can say, well, if I subtract this bottom equation from the top equation, I will get rid of x, x minus x, and then the remaining equation will be just in terms of y and I can solve for y. And that is an analytical method. You do it just by inspection. Now, there's another way to do that, which is very similar, where I take x on one side of the equation, move all the y elements over to the other side, and I will have x equals 0.7 minus 0.2y, just moving 0.2y over here. And I do the same for the second equation in terms of y. y equals minus 0.5 minus x. And then what I can do is I can take x, plug it into y and solve for y, because I've gotten rid of, of the x. So then I will get this equation, y equals minus 0.5 minus this x, and from that I can solve for y, and the result is y equals minus 1.5, and then I can use that to solve for x, and x equals one. So that is an analytical uh, determination of the exact value. You're basically, looking at this, analyzing it, and replacing values to come up with the exact value. Now, like I mentioned, there is also an iterative method that you can use, especially if you're gonna use a computer to solve for you, and you will get not the exact answer, but you will get an answer very close within a tolerance, okay? And that is an iterative solution 
where you, like we talked about before, you solve uh, using a guess, then you get your better value and resolve and a better value, and you keep solving until your, your difference, your change in the iterative values gets below an acceptable value. So you're not going to necessarily get the exact answer, but you're going to get one that's very, very, very close, depending on how much tolerance you're willing to accept. So again, there's two different methods. There's actually many more methods to solve these simple equations. Uh, but when you get into complicated networks, um, there can be many, many, many equations and many, many, many unknowns. So we're going to talk about using an iterative solution to do that because as you can see, if this was 100 equations and 100 unknowns, doing it analytically can get uh, very, very difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two very simple equations with two unknowns and I'm going to solve them iteratively using MATLAB. Okay, so let's jump over to MATLAB and here is a simple MATLAB script to solve those two equations and two unknowns. And here in the comments I'm saying here's my equation x plus 0.2y equals 0.7, x plus y equals minus 0.5. And we saw that uh, analytically, we can subtract the equations and get x equals 1, y equals minus 1.5. So to do that iteratively, here's all the code I need. And I'm basically just going to start with um, initializing two vectors. I'm going to calculate, I'm going to go iterate 15 times. So I'm going to set up two vectors for x and y, the values for x and y. And they're going to be 15, it's going to be a 15 by 1 vector. So I'm setting up uh, x is 15 zeros, a, matri a vector of, 16, of 15 zeros, and y is a, a vector of 15 zeros, just to initialize these two vectors. And then I'm going to set up my initial guesses. Uh, x, I'm going to give an initial guess of 2, and y, I'm going to give an initial guess of 2. You can use whatever you want, I just pick 2 and 2. Here is all the code I need to iterate 15 times to solve these equations, okay? And x, I have, I have like I did in the last video, in the last slide, I've, I've, I've determined values for x and y, and that's right here. x uh, i uh, iteration equals 0.7 minus 0.2 times y, the previous value of y, and same for y. All right, so here's my two equations. I'm going to do 15 times, and each time it's going to take the previous value, the best value for x and y, and plug them in and solve a new value of x and y for that iteration. And when I'm done, I'm going to plot. In this case, I'm just going to plot the y values for each iteration and see what it looks like. Okay, so 15 times through, and I'll just plot. So let me run this. And here is the plot for the y values. And you can see it starts out at minus 2.6 and then plus 0.8 and then one, minus 1 1.6. And it, it bounces around until around uh, maybe eight iterations, it comes up to the minus 1.5 that we determined. Okay, so it bounces around and it takes about eight iterations. And we can do the same to plot x. I'll change that to x, run it. And you can see I get about the same, but it converges to a value of 1 after about 8 iterations again. It bounces around for the first few iterations, and at 8, it comes out to uh, um, uh, the correct value. So now, uh, what we have just, just done is done what's called the Jacobi uh, iterative process, where we have taken these two values, started out with our guess, and both of these values have taken the guess, and they wait, we get through each iteration, then replace the guess with the latest value and recalculate. Now there's another way to do this, and it's called the Gauss-Seidel. And all that, the, different, the only difference here is I can replace uh, this value. Instead of taking my guess, I've just calculated in the previous line the latest value of xi, so I can use that to calculate the value of y. I can use the best previous calculation. And then I'll run it, and I can see, well now, if I, if I plot x, here I am at five um, iterations, and already it is about, uh, it, it's, it's converged to the correct uh, value of one. So the last one took eight, 
iterations. With the Gauss-Seidel, it took only five, and I can do the same for y. I can plot that. So I run it, and see, I can go, it goes start from minus eight, and it go, converges at minus 1.5, the correct value, after five iterations. So there's a couple ways, there's a few ways to do this iteration. You can use the Jacobi, you can use the Gauss-Seidel. Uh, in ours, we're going to use the Gauss-Seidel, where you calculate a value and, and immediately replace all the others that rely on that value with the latest calculation instead of waiting for the values after each iteration. Okay, so that's basically how we're going to do this. And hopefully that gives you a good idea on, on the, um, the algorithms we're going to use. So next what we're going to do is we're going to jump into um, Visual Studio. And I've already got some code that we talked about in previous videos um, about how we can set up a solver uh, to do this. Now in previous videos, in the first video, we talked about the basic um, algorithms and the approach we're going to use to solve. Uh, in the second video, we talked about using an object-oriented approach, and we talked about having classes uh, for, like, for example, for our shunt elements, for our loads, for our buses, and for our transformers and our lines and our generators. We set up classes, and each has properties that we're going to access to solve this um, problem. And we also have an array class, which stores all of the arrays of all the data for all the elements and all the uh, admittances. And in the third video, we introduced a method using a, a freely available library to input data in a CSV or commerce separated value file, a text file, and automatically populate the properties of each of these um, elements, each of these objects from, uh, from base classes, um, and directly populate the properties from the input text file. So now we've got, um, we've got all of our data input from an external file, and here I've set up a class called a solver class. And that class is going to actually do the solution. We're going to feed it the data we brought in from the input text file. And it's going to operate on that uh, using a Gauss solver. So here is my class. It's, we call it the solver class. And you can see it has two properties. One is called iterations and one is called tolerance. And we'll talk about those a little bit later, but basically they're public properties that anybody can get or set. We've also got two methods here. Now, you don't need to do this. I've just put this for um, illustration. I've got um, two methods here. One does a Newton solver, which is a newton raphson solution, which is one way to solve this, which we'll maybe talk about in a, in a, a future video. And the one we're going to work on today is called a Gauss solver, which is a Gauss Seidel. And the Gauss solver method, as you can see, is right here. And it takes as input a system arrays class, which is this array class we talked about before, which has got the admittance matrices. It's got all of the input data from the file with all the properties for the buses, the generators, the lines. And it will take that as an input, since that's a public um, class that we can access all the data. It will take that as an input. We're going to call it array. And it will use that data and crunch through what we need to calculate. And it will return a vector, a complex 32-bit vector. And that vector will be Vbus, which will be the final calculated values for all of the bus voltages at all of the buses. So it basically takes the system arrays class as an input and returns a vector with VBus as the output. This solution has um, three areas, is pretty much just initializing the arrays and vectors that I need to solve. The first thing, um, I'm going to initialize uh, my VBus, which is my uh, voltages at each bus. And I'm just going to make a VBus vector. And I'm using the build dense, which we talked about before. And we're setting it up with however many buses that we have brought in from the um, text file. Also, I'm setting up a vector called PQBus, 
which is going to be the vector, which has all of the values of net power and uh, watts and bars at each bus. And I'm setting up a tolerance double, which is 1e to the minus 6, which we'll talk about. And I'm also setting up some complex numbers. Uh, two of them are 0, and one of them is 1.6, and we'll talk about that. But these are basically just initializing. Uh, at this point, I also need to set up a flat start um, V bus. Instead of just zeros, I want it to start with initial estimates for all of the voltages at all the buses and whatever fixed set points are at each uh, generator bus. So this method down here that I'm calling will take these arrays and it will make a VBUS and it will basically give a automatic one per unit uh, flat start voltage to all of the load buses and for any generator buses it will set the initial value of whatever that fixed uh, bus voltage is. So now VBUS instead of just being zeros it will be all ones except for the generator buses it will have the fixed set points. And then here I'm just making a Q bus, which just sums all of the generation plus all the load at each bus to get a net uh, watts and vars at each bus to initialize this PQ bus. Okay, so here I'm just initializing in these, in these three, initializing all of the vectors and getting everything set up. And here I've got basically the calculations that we're going to run through to solve at all of the buses and get a final V bus that we can return to the caller. So this is a nice compact um, class that we can call the method and um, it will basically just return V bus. Now to do this, I'm going to expand this and here is the code that I will do to, um, to calculate the voltage at each bus. Now, it looks kind of complicated, but it really isn't. Um, we've, we've calculated the flat start V bus, we've got a PQ bus, and we've got all the other vectors ready. So now, the first thing i got to do is initialize some arrays and values. Um, remember, I, I mentioned in a previous slide, we need to set up some vectors with the old, um, the previous iteration V bus values for each of the buses and also the, differenti the difference between the old and the latest. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just setting up two vectors with uh, initializing to zero. And here what I'm doing, I am taking the, the initial values of VBUS, VBUS, remember we set them all to ones, plus whatever the set points are at the generators, and copying all those values to this VBUS old, to initialize VBUS old instead of all zeros, it will look the same as this initial V bus, okay? And then what I'm doing is I'm setting this double value of diff equals one, and we'll talk about that in a, in a bit. Now, once I've got those set up, this while statement is all I'm doing to calculate the voltage at each bus, okay? Now, um, I'm doing this while statement as long as the diff is greater than the tolerance, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, but I'm, basically, this is just iterating through uh, each bus, each iteration through all the buses, as long as my difference between the latest calculation of the voltage and the previous calculation is greater than the tolerance. When it starts to converge, this is going to no longer be true, and I will I will finish and return VBUS, okay? So while um, I'm still, I haven't reached my tolerance yet, this is all I'm going to do to calculate the bus voltages. And here I'm going to solve voltage for each bus once in this um, for loop, okay? So the way it works is for I equals zero, to the number to less than number of buses. So it, this is going to go around to each bus and solve this um, for the for the iteration we're in. So we're in the first iteration, it's going to, going to go around to each bus and solve. 
and then we're going to go around to the next iteration and we're going to do it again. So this for loop solves uh, each bus for that iteration. Now, when you get into this, there are two types of buses you have to solve for. One is a load bus, which we call a PQ, where, where watts and vars are specified at the load, but we don't know the voltage. And then there's a generator bus, which is a PV, where we specify the generator output and the set point of the uh, bus voltage, but we still we don't know the VARs, okay? So <clears throat> we're going to do two uh, calculations depending on what type of bus it is. So if it's a PQ bus, we will go through if the um, bus type and we're going to, to grab from the system arrays that we, we built from the um, text file. If the bus type for that bus that we're looking at is a 1, which means it's a load bus, a regular load bus, then do all of this. If not, then jump over here and assume it's a generator bus. So if it's a type 1, what we're going to do first is calculate what I called in the previous slides in the previous videos, the remote bus current components. So from J equals 0 to the number of buses, calculate the sum of the V bus, the remote bus voltage, times the admittance of that line coming into this bus we're calculating for. So remember, we're summing all of those remote components. If J equals I, then just continue, don't calculate this, because this is all for the remote components, not for the local where J would equal I, okay? So fairly simple, we just go through, calculate all the remote components, and then once we've got those, sum I remote, we've summed all those, then we can plug that in to this equation. And as we said before, that's basically just this equation that we're solving here. Here's all the sum I remotes. Once we calculate those, we plug them into this equation, then solve um, using the, the P and Q like we show here. So here we've got We've got the, we've summed all the remotes, so V bus I equals 1 over Y bus I, I, I. Okay, so that's, for, for this example, it's Y bus 2, 2 times PQ bus conjugate over V bus conjugate minus the sum of those remote. So basically, we are, we are just calculating this equation for this iteration, okay? So once we've got that, we've got the latest calculation of bus voltage for this bus that we're calculating. Then we also said we need to find out if we are converging. So once we've got this V bus I, what we do is we subtract it from the previous V bus for the previous iteration. And in this case, we've got V bus old, which you recall we, we initialized to the initial guess before we did this calculation. So the, this V bus old now has the initial guess of the 1.0 for all of the buses except for the generator bus. This V bus has the new updated V bus. So we just subtract those and that's the difference between the old uh, iteration and the new iteration. Okay, so now we've got a difference between the previous iteration and this iteration. So one thing you can do with this iterative solution is instead of just accepting that um, we are going to in, we are going to improve the value by this difference, okay? We can kind of force the solution in the right direction by um, overcompensating, kind of. Instead of just having a new V bus that's that's this difference from the old V bus, we can kind of force it by applying an acceleration factor. And usually this acceleration factor is somewhere around 1.4 to 1.6. And it says, okay, take this difference from the old to the new, multiply it times, say, 1.6, which I'm doing here, and then add that to the old value to get a revised accelerated value for VBUS. So we're not just calculating a new VBUS, we're, VBUS, we're kind of forcing it in the direction that we're going to make it converge a little bit faster. And hopefully this helps to uh, cut down the number of iterations
uh, and force a solution faster. So that's why uh, previously I showed we, we have a complex 32 number called Excel, which is basically just a, a magnitude of 1.6. It's a complex number, and we're going to use that as the acceleration factor. So now we have give, we've got a new value for VBUS, and we can go through and keep iterating. Now, if this is a, a generator bus, it will skip over this, and it will do a little bit different solution for a generator bus. And the reason we need to do a little bit different solution for a generator bus is, like I said, we don't, ha we don't know what the, the VAR output is, and we can't calculate that until we know the voltage. So if the bus type is 2, uh, we will go through and we will calculate um, for all of the buses, the remote bus current components like we did before. And then from that, we will calculate the VARs at the bus. And the VARs, we will call it Q nu, is a very similar equation. V bus I times uh, the conjugate of V bus times the sum of these remote current components, the imaginary of that. And once we calculate the, the VARs at the bus, we take this Q nu and plug it into the PQ for this bus as this Q nu. So we leave the real component, whatever it is, we leave it the way it is. We just uh, make PQ bus, uh, whatever the existing real component is, but we add this new uh, VAR component into the PQ bus element for this uh, bus. Now that we've got the correct PQ, we can go in and do the exact same equation that we did in the, for the load bus to calculate the voltage, because now we've got the correct value of P and Q. So again, for the um, we go through the number of buses, we take the sum of the remote um, V times the Y bus for that line. And when we're done, we solve for V bus I. And we have now a new value of V bus for this generator bus. Now, keep in mind, however, that this V bus value is not going to be the same as the set point on the regulator. So what we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to, to recalculate the actual magnitude to make sure that this VBUS magnitude equals the regulator set point. So really what we've been doing here is we've been calculating the angle of this voltage at this bus, not the magnitude, because we already know the magnitude is whatever the set point is on the regulator. So we've just been calculating the angle. So what we want to do is um, force this magnitude for this newly calculated bus voltage to be the same as the set point on the regulator. So to do that, uh, the new value of V bus is equal to the what we just calculated times the set point divided by the existing new magnitude. Okay, so we're just increasing V bus by a factor of whatever this set point is over the uh, magnitude we just calculated. And that gives us a new V bus with the correct magnitude uh, and it's got the new updated angle. Okay, so now we have gone through for all the PQ buses and all the generator buses, we have for this iteration calculated the bus voltage, uh, corrected updated bus voltage for each of those buses. And now we can go through and do the next iteration, go around the system and, and calculate all those. Now, um, the one final thing we need to do in this iteration, uh, here I'm just keeping track of how many iterations. I'm doing iterations plus plus, and previously I'd set, I initialized that to zero. But we also need to find out if we're converging. So remember we had this diff value that we um, uh, defined. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this V bus diff. Remember, we have this vector, which is the old versus minus the new minus the old values of uh, bus voltage. Uh, I'm taking the difference and I'm taking the absolute maximum. Now, in MathNet, 
one of the great things is it's got these great methods. And here I can take the absolute maximum method for this vector, v bus diff, and it will take the, the maximum of the absolute values of all of the complex numbers. And it will give me the, re the real value will give me the largest absolute maximum value of any of these um, bus voltages. So it will look through, in this case, the four bus voltages and look the the magnitudes of those complex numbers and find what is the greatest. And it will give me a double, a single number, which is the real component and will tell me, okay, the largest difference from the old to the new is this amount, okay? So once I know that, I can determine if my difference is greater than the tolerance that I have defined. And in this case, I've defined a tolerance of about one times 10 to the minus six. So until this differential gets down to one times 10 to the minus six, I'm gonna keep iterating through, okay? So um, here I've calculated the diff, and here I will check again the next iteration. Is my difference greater than tolerance? If so, keep going. If it's less than one times uh, 10 to the minus six, it will stop. And here, what I'm doing is I am copying my V bus, my latest V bus to the old, so then it will update for the next iteration and I can calculate uh, the new versus the old. And to do that, I'm using a MathNet copy two. Now we mentioned in one of the other videos, you don't wanna set V bus old equal to V bus because those are reference values. Matrices are reference values and they will make them the actual, the absolute same numbers. We just want to copy the values from VBus to VBus old. So now what I can do is I can run this and um, I've got a, my application is ready to do a solution. And here's my load flow. I've, I've modified it from a previous um, video and I can open a file and I'll get a 30 bus. This is an IEEE 30 bus system and it will print out uh, the MVA base it got from the first um, card in the file. It's got 30 buses, 21 loads, two shunts, six generators, 41 lines, zero transformers, and it took 110 iterations. And the elapsed time was 13 milliseconds, and I used a stopwatch function to calculate how many milliseconds. And here are the the, the answers of the final bus voltages for each bus. And here I've got my first bus, which is a, a swing bus set at 1.05 angle of zero. And here's each of the bus voltages for the 30 buses. And here I've printed out the net bus power injections in per unit for each bus. So uh, that's the basic concept behind writing code for a um, for a solver method and maybe in future videos we'll get into doing a newton raphson version and maybe some more of the detail and how we we did some of these but uh, hope that helps take care and have a really good day